Hello, and welcome to Toolbox, Episode 8, Distress Tolerance, which is covering reality acceptance skills. Uh, thank you for joining me, and we'll get started. All right, so this web series is done in partnership with the Lake Washington School District and Youth Eastside Services. So Youth Eastside Services is the leading behavioral health service provider for children and youth ages birth to 22 and their families in East King County. Um, we are a lifeline for kids and families coping with challenges like emotional distress and substance use. So that is a little bit about us. Um, services that Youth Eastside Services provide is youth and family mental health counseling, substance use and co-occurring disorder counseling, as well as community education and prevention programs. Uh, I am part of the community education and prevention programs team. I work in the Lake Washington School District. Um, that's kind of my background. We'll get a little bit more into that in a second. Uh, if you would like to reach out to Youth Eastside Services, uh, we are actually not currently offering uh, any appointments at this moment in time, but you can always reach out to double check as well as get on a waiting list for appointments if that is what we're doing at the time. You can go to youtheastsideservices.org uh, as well as giving that phone number a call to talk to somebody and ask and double check. And you can also follow us on social media at whichever one you choose. If you need to reach out to somebody else uh, and it is an emergency but it's not necessarily 911, King County Crisis Line is available to you 24 7 at that number, or you can also text Crisis Text Line uh, at 741 741. If you are a teen listening and tuning in, you can always access Teen Link from 10 to 6, sorry, 6 to 10 p.m. nightly um, by either calling or going online and chatting them. And that is staffed by Teens for Teens, which is a great resource if you need that support. Um, so who am I? I am Delaney Nottnearest. I'm the school-based behavioral health coordinator. I'm a social worker by training as well as a drug and alcohol counselor. And unfortunately, my coworker and colleague, Kaylin Griffith, is not available to be here with me tonight. So you guys just have to bear with me uh, and basically just talking to myself. Um, so she has been supporting me throughout this web series, um, which is great. So if you see her, give her a shout out um, and see her in other previous or upcoming videos. So the materials that we use in these webisodes are from these two resources, the DBT in Schools book, as well as the DBT Training Skills Manual. Um, I am foundationally trained in DBT, and YES is a DBT-informed organization. So everything that we do comes from these two resources. Uh, Marshall Linehan is the creator of DBT, um, but if you need some more or want to even see more skills, feel free to check out these two uh, resources for you. So today's agenda, we will do mindfulness, uh, like we always do, review a little bit of distress tolerance, um, kind of going into those reality acceptance skills. The skill we are learning today is radical acceptance, which is one of my favorites, but also one of the hardest, I think, as well. Um, give you some at-home practice, as well as having a Q&A if anybody else shows up for us live. Um, as always, you can go to the YES website uh, where you registered for this training or webinar series. You can download the slides as well as download the handouts to follow along. Um, that has some great resources for you in terms of practicing at home. Um, so would recommend we have we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to learn along with us. If you are thinking about your toolbox, um, we have gone through the mindfulness unit so far. Uh, that is listing all of those skills there. So if you see something on that list and you're like, oh man, I missed that one, definitely go back and check out our YouTube videos that have those skills. Um, and we are in the distress tolerance unit right now. And the skill we are going to cover today is radical acceptance. You can see the skills we've already covered in this unit. And this is actually the final distress tolerance skill we're going to cover, um, which means that next time we are going to jump into emotion regulation, which is the next unit we have, which is one of my favorites, actually. So I'm going to stop sh screen sharing for a moment and get a YouTube video pulled up for us. Um, what Kaylin and I have been trying to do throughout this project is give you a bunch of different resources um, so that you can have quite a few different engage in mindfulness activities. Um, some mindfulness activities work for some folks, others do not. Uh, so just kind of giving you a bunch of different options. So this is a guided meditation that includes the skill radical acceptance. Um, of course, we want it to be relevant to what we're talking about. So I will play this for you all and we'll jump right in.
Welcome to LifeScape's Radical Acceptance Meditation. Find a comfortable spot for you to sit in. On a chair or a comfy couch, placing your feet on the ground, spreading your toes apart, feeling the balls of your feet being supported by the floor. Notice the chair hugging your spine and relax your shoulders. Place your palms on your thighs, face up to allow the open flow of energy. Let's begin. With a soft gaze in front of you, take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Noticing any tension in your body where you are holding discomfort, breathe and let it go. If you notice the tightness in your legs, let them fall on their own. Notice if your teeth are clenched, release the tension in your jaw. Again, take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. When you're ready, close your eyes. Today, let's focus on the word radical acceptance. Radical acceptance is to be aware of the present and all the realities that come with it. Acknowledging these realities is your first step in accepting the truth so many of us resist. We may not favor the truth of our realities, but we deserve to be kind to ourselves, forgive ourselves, favor ourselves through the practice of radical acceptance. The more acceptance you give, the less suffering you endure. The less suffering you endure, the more peace and forgiveness you feel within. If you find your thoughts shifting, that's okay. Notice your thoughts and then find your way back to the breath, breathing in and breathing out. And continue this practice when your mind shifts to bring yourself back to the present moment, feeling calm and balanced. I kindly invite you to bring the word radical acceptance in the forefront of your mind. What does it look like? Is it bold? Is it italicized? Maybe it's written in cursive or all capital letters. Now take this word radical acceptance and wrap it around your body, starting with your toes, then to your calves, your knees, your thighs, your belly, your heart, working your way up to the top of your head. Did it move slowly? Did it move fast? Maybe it was colorful. Feel the radical acceptance around and within your body. Did it pause somewhere in the body that you perhaps are feeling the most resistant? Allow yourself to accept the realities in a kind and present manner, giving yourself permission to feel compassion, love, and warmth towards yourself. As we are all beautiful creatures and deserve to forgive ourselves through this journey we call life. Maybe you, may you be free from guilt. May you be free from resistance. May you be at peace with your realities. May you be at peace with yourself. When you are ready, open your eyes. Notice how you are feeling at this very moment. Notice your mind, body, and spirit as they align with the concept of radical acceptance for today and every day as you carry this practice with you. Thank you for joining me today. May you take away the gift of radical acceptance with you. Till next time, be well, be happy. Namaste. All right, so that was us practicing a moment of mindfulness. Let me get back to our PowerPoint presentation. All right, let's jump in. So that was just a teaser of radical acceptance and we'll talk a little bit more about it. What does it mean? 
All right, so as we've already covered so far in the distress tolerance unit, there are two types of distress tolerance skills. We have our crisis survival skills, which is the ones we've been going over the past few weeks, and those are to get through a short term crisis without making it worse. So what we're trying to do there is just get through the moment. It's not necessarily to solve all of the problems that we're currently experiencing, but how do we get to the next space? Whereas reality acceptance skills are meant for long-term distressing situations where you can't really change or fix anything. It's kind of just tolerating the way that life is for various reasons. We'll jump a little bit more into that. So why they are meant for long-term things is that we can't change the past because it's over. We can't change the future because it's not here yet. So we can't really plan for it exactly because we don't know what can happen. Um, and accepting the world and yourself as it is. So again, not meant for short term, but meant for long term things that cannot be solved, only tolerated. Uh, one of my favorite sort of quotes is from the movie Kung Fu Panda. I actually had a client quoted at me, which is why I've included it here, is there's a saying, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift, which is why it's called the present. So reality acceptance is sort of just accepting the way that it is, the current present moment, and then figuring out where do we go from here. So reality is what it is. Everything is caused and pain is inevitable in our lives. We've been talking about this through all this distress tolerance unit, is we're human. We're going to experience pain, whether we like it or not. It's how we handle and deal with that pain that is kind of the important thing, right? When we choose to use our skills or not choose to use our skills. Uh, everything should be as it is because everything is caused, which means everything has a reason for why it sort of happens, which sometimes can be hard to sit with. But if we want it to change an effect, we have to change the cause. So we have to accept what we cannot change in this moment, which can be really hard. Um, there's things that I did yesterday that maybe I would have liked to change, but it's kind of too late now. But if I uh, don't accept what has happened, uh, it's only going to add to that pain, which then causes suffering. So suffering equals pain plus non-acceptance. Whereas if we start accepting things, the pain is a little bit easier to manage and we can actually do something with it instead of sort of ignoring it, being in denial and kind of continue that suffering. So examples of things that might happen to you that you might not have control over and need to rattle, rattle, radically accept um, are kind of listed here. And of course you can pick one of these if it relates to you, um, but you can also keep you know, create one of your own if it kind of comes up to you. We'll talk a little bit more about how you can practice this and be thinking about this, um, but keep this in your mind throughout the webinar. So examples could be your GPA falls below 2.0 and now you can't play in the next game, right? So the consequences obviously falling of your GPA falling are something that was caused, um, but the thing that you have to radically accept is you can't play in the next game. Um, your ex whoever that might be that you were dating is now dating somebody else. Also something you cannot change. Also something that's probably very painful. Your vacation was canceled due to COVID precautions. Uh, I personally relate to this one because I had a, you know, kind of one of those anniversary big birthdays that happened during in COVID in 2020. And I had plans to go to Disneyland and all this stuff and uh, I couldn't do it. And that kind of really sucked. And I had to radically accept that. And it was pretty difficult actually, if I'm honest. Um, number four, you didn't get the job that you were excited about. I think this happens and relate, we can relate to all, and all of us can relate to this to some extent at some point in our lives. We're really excited about something. And then we get that email that's like, sorry, you were not among the candidates chosen to go on to the interview process or whatever it might be. And another example could be you can't afford to pay off your bills this month. That's that's really heavy, right? And really tough. And we have to sit with it and we have to figure out what we can do about it. But if we don't accept it, then we can't really make any change just kind of what we're talking about today. So choices that you can make. What I really think is, um, what I think is actually really interesting, this part has been throughout DBT, and I believe we talked about this earlier in our web series, is that using this framework, you should be able to use it for any problem that you face in your entire life, should work, uh, which kind of is a big thing to wrap your head around because I'm the type of person that likes to think through all the situations and all the scenarios. And you're telling me that there's only four options I have in any situation, well, it seems fake. But if you really think about it, you can boil down almost any decision that you make into these four options. So if you have a problem, uh, there are only four things you can really do. You can figure out how to solve that problem. You can change how you feel about that problem. You can accept the problem, or you can stay miserable or make things worse by acting on your impulsive urges. And that's about it. 
So thinking about your problems and what you want to do with it, we've, we will cover some problem solving skills later on, I believe. Um, also, we'll talk about emotions in emotion regulation. So that's kind of one and two. Um, and now we're really talking about number three. Uh, but number four, hopefully throughout all of this, you'll learn some skills that might impact, you know, one or two or might help you get into one, two or three. Um, but, you know, that is always an option to just let things stay the same um, or make it worse. So why bother accepting reality? Uh, I'm a big fan of Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, so here's, here's a little comic. It's not denial. I'm just very selective about the reality that I accept, uh, which is of course actually not what we want to do. So that's meant to be a joke. Um, but why bother accepting reality? Rejecting reality does not change reality. So just because I decide, hey, this actually isn't happening or is, is never happened or whatever it might be, that really actually doesn't change anything at all. It's just me not dealing with whatever it is, right? Um, changing reality first requires accepting reality. So one of the examples that I like to think of is a lot of the sort of systemic things that are going on right now in the United States of America, specifically around race and racism. And if I do not accept the fact that I have white privilege, so I'm gonna speak from my own experiences, if I reject that I have white privilege, right, then there is no way I can ever make any movement or change and accept that I have white privilege if I deny that it exists. So in order to, for me to help change anything when it comes to race and racism in the United States, I have to accept first that I have white privilege and that this is a problem that I have a part in to some, that I have a part in, not to some extent, I do have a part in it. And by rejecting that reality, sort of, it turns pain into suffering. And with the example of white privilege, um, it might actually necessarily not change pain and suffering for me specifically, but it will certainly uh, cause pain and suffering for other people if I do not acknowledge the privilege that I have. Uh, and then refusing to accept reality can keep you stuck in that unhappiness, anger, shame, sadness, bitterness, or other painful emotions. So you can't really move forward until you accept the way that it is. You can't really actually make any change either until you accept the way that it is, which, like I said at the beginning of this, great skill, really hard to put into practice. So how do we do that? Again, we want to define what radical acceptance is for you. So breaking it down, radical is the complete and total accepting in the mind, heart, and body. So in all sorts of spaces, sometimes I think we can accept things in the mind, but not accept them in the heart, um, or we can also feel it in our body. Uh, there's a really great Mumford and Sons lyric that I like, and it's like, my head told my heart, um, let love grow, but my heart told my head this time, no. Um, so, you know, you, you have to accept it in all three of those places. Otherwise you really won't be able to move forward. And that acceptance is seeing reality for what it really is, even if you don't like it. Uh, so this meme that I added here below is from Indiana Jones and the last crusade. Uh, one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid, obviously it has some things didn't age well, but either way, uh, the moment when Indiana Jones gets his iconic hat, um, that you probably are all aware of if you're familiar with the character. Uh, he gets it from a man who I guess sort of wins or beats him that day and he says to him you lost today kid but that doesn't mean you have to like it so for the character he has to accept yeah he did lose uh, but that doesn't mean he has to like it that's what is a really important key thing about radical acceptance is just because you accept reality doesn't mean you're saying that you like it uh, that you want it to be the way it is it just means you are accepting it and moving forward but that doesn't mean you have to like it. So I think of that when I think of reality, a radical acceptance. So in a step-by-step -step process of radical acceptance, what would you do? First thing is observing what is going on, right? We talked about our mindfulness skills way back at the beginning of this, observe. Are you questioning or fighting reality? Are you saying something like this shouldn't be this way? That can be a really big indicator that you are not accepting reality and you might need to think about it. The second step would be reminding yourself that unpleasant reality is just as it is and it cannot be changed. This is what happened. You know, thinking about the facts, this thing happened. And don't worry, I will walk you through an example that I have in my own personal life. So reminding yourself that reality is unpleasant, it is what it is. Next, you're gonna remind yourself that there are causes to reality, acknowledging the history and noticing those causes. So in a way you're gonna validate yourself in like, this is what's happened, this is how I got here or validate whatever else is going on if it's somebody else or just the experiences that you're having is, this is how, thing happen this is how things happened and that made them this way. So just acknowledging that, because if you don't acknowledge it, 
how are you really going to be able to move forward? And again, like we're going through with DBT, things happen for a reason. We make choices and then the, we have outcomes and consequences. And if we choose to make different choices, we'll have different outcomes and consequences. So it's being mindful and intentional on what you do and how you walk in the world and your behaviors. Again, the B in DBT, behavioral, um, is, is how we sort of choose to walk through the world. So reminding yourself there are causes and you did have, you could have had some impact in it, or maybe you didn't, um, but things happen because they happen. Number four, then practicing accepting with your whole self. How do you do this? This, of course, is going to be really challenging. We have been going through so many different skills and mindfulness um, throughout this unit so far, or this web series so far, and using some of those skills will be really helpful in this. So ex using accepting self-talk, relaxation techniques, mindfulness techniques, going to a place that helps bring acceptance, right? Like if you are just really stuck and you, you know, for example, like working from home right now, is there going to be a different space that feels better for you to be like, okay, yeah, I need to, to go somewhere where I'm like, this is how it is. This is what's going to happen. Um, or if you're in the office, like where, where would that sort of space be? Or if you're at school. Um, number five is then practicing opposite action. I think we'll talk about opposite action in the motion regulation uh, unit. It is one of my favorite skills. Um, so a little preview for that. What opposite action is, is doing the opposite of what you really feel like or want to do. One of the examples we always show in DBT group is there's a TikTok video of this girl crying, but she's dancing, um, which are two things that don't seem to really go together because she's having an emotional reaction, but she's still doing the thing anyway. So with radical acceptance, what is the opposite of what you want to do or what you're going through? So list the behaviors that would, you would you would do if you accepted the situation and then do those things because it's going to help sort of force you or push you into that space of acceptance. And then number six, coping ahead. Again, that's another skill um, that we will talk about in the motion regulation. But coping ahead means looking forward to see what might happen so that you can kind of prepare about accepting it. So imagine what you might have to do um, in the future that you might have a hard time expect, accepting and then rehearse what you would do if you accepted what seems unacceptable. Again, I'm gonna walk through this all again with an example in my own personal life. So it'll help make it a little bit more clear, but I'm gonna go through this first. Next is number seven, attend to your body sensations as you think about what you need to accept. Again, our minds and our bodies are really interconnected and your mind might say, yeah, I've accepted this, but you just might have this feeling in your gut or you might have tension in your neck or whatever it is. So checking in with your body and saying, okay, where is it that I'm getting hung up and where is it that I'm not feeling this acceptance? They also talked about it in that mindfulness video that we just did, um, that we went through and listened to, of where is it kind of getting stuck in your body and checking in with that because if you aren't addressing it in all three spaces, in your mind, your heart and your body, you're not gonna be able to fully radically accept something. Number eight, allowing for disappointment, sadness or grief to arise within you. Your emotions again are valid. We want to still obviously check the facts about them, but you can, but you should take a moment to acknowledge those things. Whatever it is that you need to radically accept, there is going to probably be disappointment or sadness. There could even be grief or loss or change. And acknowledging that will help you move forward. If you don't acknowledge it, again, it can get really stuck. And again, we'll talk more about emotion regulation in the next upcoming unit um, and how we want to make sure we're acknowledging our emotions and moving forward. So number nine, acknowledge that life can be worth leaving, living even when there's pain. So just saying, yeah, this moment sucks. Yeah, I don't like it. And life is worth living for all of these other things and reminding yourself of what that looks like or what that might be. And then 10, um, doing pros and cons if you find yourself resisting practicing acceptance. Again, pros and cons is a skill. We've actually already gone over it. So I would recommend listening to that or watching that video, um, but doing pros and cons to sort of see and outline, okay, if I don't accept this, what's gonna happen? If I do accept this, what's gonna happen? And then really sitting with it and being like, okay, well, which outcome do I want? And that can be helpful too. So going through an example, this is an example I always give in group. I currently have a different car, thankfully, um, but I had a different car that had been stolen twice. Uh, it and I definitely had to practice radical acceptance. What was really funny actually is the second time my car was stolen was right before I did the DBT training and I was like, cool. Uh, and it was a perfect example when I walked through it when I went through the training. So first thing, observing, my car shouldn't have been stolen, right? I was just like, cool, why would people steal my car? I don't understand, it's my car, it's my my thing that I own. I did all the things I was supposed to do. It was locked, it was not necessarily parked somewhere, you know, one time it was parked in front of my house. Um, 
my car should not have been stolen. So observing that was the first step to radically accepting the fact that my car was stolen. Just acknowledging that. Number two, I had to remind myself, uh, this sucks, but I can't change what happened. I can't go back in time. I can't, I guess I can't go back in time to park in a different place or I don't even know what else I could have done um, because I would have had to park near my house, um, you know, but I can't change what happened. So reminding myself it's done, can't change what happened, can't go back in time. And then three, causes for the reality that I was living. I drive a car that's easily to break into. Doesn't necessarily mean it's okay that somebody broke into it, but I drive a car that's easy to break into. Um, I mean, that's about it. One time it was stolen in a place that like was on a small side road. There are lots of other cars. And then the other time it was stolen, it was right in front of my house. So I don't know, the environment could have maybe potentially been a cause, but sort of acknowledging that that's the way that it is. Number four, practicing mindfulness. Um, one time, the first time it got stolen, I walked into my supervisor's office, obviously in a panic, being like, I don't know where my car is, because I had that moment of like, pretty sure I parked it here, and it's not here anymore, and there's another car in its place, which is really weird. Walking into her office, she sat me down and was like, okay, we're going to breathe, we're going to figure this out. Um, so checking in uh, and, and, and accepting that sort of in the moment, because in the moment I was like, that didn't just happen. There's no way that happened. Choosing opposite action. Um, thinking about the things that I needed to do. So for example, I went to the police station and I filed a report for a stolen, stolen vehicle. That is what I needed to do. I didn't really want to do those things because I was acknowledging that my car had been stolen and it was somewhere that I didn't know and who had it, but that was what I needed to do. So I had to practice opposite action and go and do that. Coping ahead, um, definitely had to figure out how I was going to buy a new car, if I needed to buy a new car, financial considerations, all of that. Thankfully, they did find my car both times it had been stolen. So I didn't have to think about that, but I did need to think about what I was going to do to try to get to work. Um, so coping ahead in that way. Checking in with what's happening in my body. Um, definitely had to do that a few times. I personally just have a lot of anxiety uh, and I have to keep tabs on that because otherwise sometimes it will escalate and then I will act in ways that are not ways that I would choose to act or not act skillfully. Um, I had to allow myself also too to just be upset because it was really frustrating and it was really upsetting. But without acknowledging that and pushing that away, I don't think I would have been able to move forward um, also, just acknowledging that it sucked and it would be okay. So remember that life is worth living, even if it is painful. Uh, it definitely sucked in those moments. Um, definitely cried. Definitely lost money uh, because I never got any of the money back from the people that stole it because you're supposed to, but whatever. Um, and it ended up being okay. Like I said, right now I have a different car. I was able to afford a different car and hopefully this one won't be stolen. And then at the time, I did not have to do a pros and cons chart, but I could have about accepting my car being stolen. That could have been an option for me. So hopefully that makes it a little bit more clear on how to go through the steps of radical acceptance with an example of my car being stolen. So as always, we want to give you guys some at-home practice. How can you practice this in your own life? Uh, again, if you are following along with our worksheets, we upload those online. You can use that as well. It has great little reflection questions for you and places to fill this out. Um, so please download that. Uh, you can get access to that again on our website. So the practice at home. Identify two very important things in your life right now that you need to radically accept. Those could be uh, any number of things. And then rate how you accept this part of yourself or your life. So zero means no acceptance. I'm in complete denial. And five is complete acceptance. I am at peace with this and it doesn't bother me anymore. I definitely remember during COVID times being like in complete denial when like all this started and being like, yeah, this is fine. Everything's fine. I, you know, this is just going to be over in like a week. We'll be back to the office and just sort of not accepting that it was the way that it was. Um, so I probably would have rated myself at like a zero during the beginning of COVID and quarantine. And then also identifying two less important things in your life that you're trouble having accepting, that you're having trouble accepting this week and also rate those as well. Then you're gonna look at those four things that you wrote down and you're gonna refine your list in a way because we wanna make sure we're using our skills, right? So you're gonna check the facts. Is, my interp is this my interpretation or, and or opinions? So when you read those statements, is it something that's actually fact or is it your interpretation of it or what you think it is? And looking at that and really trying to boil it down to what is it that actually is going on so that you can accept it and move forward. Checking for judgment. So we talked about um, 
trying to be non-judgmental in our thinking, and those can mean two different ways in terms of discriminating or evaluating. So are there any discriminating thoughts in there? Or sorry, not discriminating, evaluating. Evaluating judgment thoughts, the good and the bad, um, any judgmental language. Do you see that in those statements that you wrote of things you need to accept? And then rewrite those things if necessary to make sure that they're factual and non-judgmental. Because if you're thinking and have your kind of in that emotion mind, it's going to be pretty hard to radically accept something. So doing the best we can to get into that wise mind and being factual and non-judgmental with what we wrote down. And then we want to practice. So choose one item from the very important list and one item from the less important list to practice on in the upcoming week. These are some things that you can do. Again, the skills that you can check off or think about when you're trying to radically accept something. So you can observe if you were questioning or fighting reality. You can remind yourself that reality is what it is. You can practice opposite action. You can imagine coping with problems that could arise if you accepted it, so coping ahead. Notice that life can be worth living even if there's pain in your life. Considered the causes of reality and non-judgmentally accepted those causes exist. You practice accepting all the way with your whole mind, body, and spirit. You did pros and cons potentially of acceptance versus denial and rejection. You attended to your body sensations um, and thought about what you needed to accept. And you allowed yourself to experience disappointment, sadness, or grief. So when you're trying to reality, trying to radically accept something, you can look at these skills and try out these skills to see if it helps move anything or changes your rating at all. Again, go to that handout. It's gonna be super useful. It has everything written there. So, bro, do you even track your emotions? As we've been talking about throughout this whole distress tolerance unit, and then also in the mindfulness unit as well, one of the things that is really, really powerful is checking in with yourself on a daily basis or whatever basis makes sense to you. I am a big fan of doing the things that I recommend in counseling um, because I think it's really hypocritical if I were to be like, hey, you should practice mindfulness. And then I also don't do it myself. And let me tell you, it's really hard. And it's good to put myself in the shoes of somebody saying, hey, you should try this out and then not actually do it myself. So I have definitely practiced um, tracking my own emotions um, and my moods and skills that I use throughout the week. It is tough and challenging, but you get a lot of great information about it. I get to know what skills I'm using and also help remind me to use my skills. There's a lot of really helpful apps that you can find online. Um, you can use a notes, you can use a notebook, you can use something on your phone, whatever works for you, whenever works for you, but trying to figure out when do you do that because um, it can be really, really helpful. So again, at YES, we use what's called diary cards. This is a snapshot of one of those diary cards, specifically from the Distress Tolerance Unit, which is the unit that we're in. So you can see number 27 on here is radical acceptance. When did you practice radical acceptance? Or when did you practice any of these distress tolerance skills? Gives you an idea of like, hey, actually, you know, I could use pros and cons right now. Let me check that off. Thursday evening, pros and cons, whatever it might be. Questions, comments, or concerns? At the moment, we do not have anybody joining us virtually. Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep forward, keep moving forward and wrap it up for this video. Again, you can reach out to us at the YES website or you can give us a call. Again, we are not currently accepting new clients, but you can always call and check in to see when that might be changing. Again, follow us on social media um, at whichever platform of your choosing, updates there, kind of see what we're doing, more events in the community, all of those fun things. Also, if you need to reach out to somebody else, 911 doesn't seem appropriate, but you are in crisis, you can always call King County Crisis Connections line. Uh, the number is listed there. You can also text the crisis text line to reach those folks there. And again, if you're a teen, you can go to Teen Link from 6 to 10 p.m. nightly. You can either call or go to the website to chat online, and that's for teens talking to other teens. It's a really great resource. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, again, hopefully I didn't talk too quickly or too fast. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in to this episode of Toolbox, uh, and I hope you join us for the next ones in the upcoming future. We are officially halfway through, by the way. There are 16 total, and this was the end of episode eight. So again, thank you for joining me, and hope to see you soon. Bye.